Yes, I, I know what that is. It's a long video. What even is hey, that? Hey, everyone. I'm Surma. And welcome to the 2022 Twitch Iceberg. This iceberg will not only include a slew of new topics, events, and stories, but also updates to previous topics as new information has been presented since, or just flat out errors on my part that need correcting. We have seven levels, so if some topics aren't covered heavily, I apologize. I'll link sources for events and people who I feel like I can't do justice to. Level 1. There seemed to be confusion in the 2021 Twitch iceberg regarding placements of topics. Think of level 1 as someone who is aware of Twitch as a platform, but doesn't really watch anyone there at all. Level 7, of course, would be someone who's been all around Twitch and Justin TV for years. Minecraft's resurgence. I previously said that Dream was one of the driving reasons why Minecraft became extremely popular again. While true, he was not the catalyst, as Dream SMP was created in April of 2020. Call me Carson and C Scoop. Minecraft hasn't been popping up at all, though. Live in March of 2019, an always live Minecraft server. They invited 10 more content creators to stream their POVs anytime they're on the server. The server ran for about a year before it ended on January 1st, 2020. There were talks of a season two, but yeah, that didn't happen. Pokimane, what a way to start off 2022, a new Pokimane drama. So this one involved her, Gideon, and surprisingly enough, Ninja. It started out with Gideon sending his viewers to raid her chat. Yo, chat, 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 chat. Guys, 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 guys. Follow her, follow her, follow her, follow her right this now, This is old news. Follow her right now, follow her right now. We're gonna be back, y'all. We this in turn got Gideon perma banned oh, for conducting whole point. a hate raid all on his first day as a partnered streamer. Twitch! Twitch! Pokey! Pokey Twitch! The following days, Ninja got involved by saying that he'll do what he can do involving Gideon's permaban. In turn, having that clip get sent everywhere. I could send him, I could send a text message to my representative and be like, from Gideon says he's sorry. After Pokimane saw it, Jessica Blevins, who is Ninja's wife, told oh, her that no. Ninja never tried to get Gideon unbanned. Then Ninja sent her this DM, and Jessica followed up with yeah, this insane that. DM. While all this was happening, Gideon and Pokimane met up in real life and made a video officially squashing the beef. So, in the end, Ninja and Ninja's wife yet again have another L underneath their belt. The Twitch Security Breach on October 6th, 2021, Twitch's Twitter account uh -oh. tweeted out this in a response to a 125 gigabyte folder posted on 4chan. The folder contained the history of Twitch's source code, payouts to streamers since 2019, and an unreleased competitor to Steam, and a whole lot more. This almost instantaneously caused streamers on Twitter to both freak out and begin messing around by taking their assigned number from the payout list and putting it in their name. Then websites and Chrome extensions started popping up and categorizing streamers by how high they were on the list. Oddly enough, no passwords were leaked and everyone just kind of forgot about it and went back to business- I am number one! Shut up! I am number one. N number one is an is an enterprise. It's a mo. It's it's an agglomeration of it's a bunch of people. Okay, it's not alone. It doesn't count. How does that count? It's number one. It's number one. It's number one. One only guys. Look, number one. You can't do anything. I had the finger up. As usual, OTV Rust what server. What happens when you throw almost every one. top Twitch streamer into a Rust server together? Surely nothing but everlasting friendships and memories. Third, third golden boy? The Rust servers that happened in 2021 started out great, but then some people killed other people, those people became enraged, people wanted to roleplay instead of play, and a million stream sniping accusations later. Oh, well, well, well. Dude, 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 dude. dude. Look who Listen, this guy's literally sniping, though. That's so fucking cringe. And the era of Rust no servers died out faster than any other Twitch meta I have ever seen. No pixel. What happens when you throw almost every top streamer into a GTA 5 server together? Surely nothing but everlasting friendships and memories. This motherfucker XQC just has something to fucking say. <laughs> this guy shouldn't Ooh, even yeah. be on the server. <laughs> like, what the That's fuck so is this? Wrong. No Pixel is a heavily modded GTA 5 server that allows streamers and really anyone who applies and gets whitelisted to create a character and- Hey! Hey! Dude! Guys! Look! Look! Know who that is? That allows streamers and really anyone who applies and gets whitelisted to create a character and roleplay with other people in the server. Now pair that with all the top streamers playing at once and you're bound to run into some issues. 
people stream sniping, extremely petty drama, and in the case of Penta and Zuma. I got him under arrest, don't worry. Things could escalate even further. After the end of that argument, they went to Twitter. Uh, soy adults that can't that can't contain their emotions, probably raised by shitty single mothers who were told their you know told them their whole life it's okay you're just competitive. And optic embos just straight. Valid point, but I also think that that people who abuse their powers and they go to to break rules uh, in order to fulfill their duties as a fake cop more is is literally uh the stanford prison experiment in a fucking nutshell um bully dandies straight up says he'll pay a cod fan to knock out penta in his next irl stream i know cop characters have a history of being aggravating to deal with but doing this is obviously just taking it to a whole unnecessary level Gambling. After people got bored burning their money with Pokemon cards, a ton of streamers decided to burn their money spinning slots. Throughout the summer of 2021, gambling on various websites became extremely popular. Huge debates on whether or not it was morally book, okay to stream gambling back. with a large chunk of all users on Twitch being under 18. I've oh, worked no. with- No, I've you worked, don't get to do that! I have worked no. with- and no. also on top whoa, whoa, whoa. Let it finish it. Win. Million dollar deals getting leaked, streamers having to move to different countries to continue gambling, even if it wasn't, it all felt extremely shady. Trainwreck would be the mainstream involved with gambling streams, and to this day, everyone has dropped it, but he is still going strong with the gambling streams. So? Ludwig Subathon. Now for the reason every streamer in the past year has done a subathon. Ludwig Subathon was an event that everyone on Twitch knows about, with it ending after 31 days and a grand total of 282,000 subscribers, which with a little Twitch math we can see comes out to a cool... $705,000 at minimum, with Ludwig donating every single sub from the final day to St. Jude's and the Humane Society, and a dollar for every sub from the previous 29 days to No Kid Hungry. Level 2. Dr. Disrespect Ban. Starting off level 2, we have an update to Dr. Disrespect's ban, which happened damn near two years ago in 2020. No one knew why he got banned, and it stayed that way until March 10th of 2022, when Doc himself tweeted out, Moving on with this picture. This, of course, Skip. Got it's an old clip. I can, I can watch it. It's not that bad. Twitch, but he nipped that in the bud quickly with this reply. It's not. But again, to this day, there has still not been a it's definitive not the world, reason it's not. given to the public as to why he was originally banned on Twitch. I bought a whole bunch of. Shungite rocks. Do you know what Shungite is? Fedmeister. This is an update for the Fedmeister situation. An extremely brief recap. He was removed from the OTV streamer house in 2020 after some very serious allegations from other OTV members were brought up. He then went silent for a year, and in June 2021, he came back with a video titled Changing My Life. Almost immediately, people started to notice how similar this video was to when Albert made a comeback. The only difference was that Albert's apology video was viewed in a much more genuine yeah, light yeah, by most yeah, people. I feel like with all this drama, whatever, I think something, uh, a life lesson that was very strong to me and really hit me hard and it made me rethink my life is that when things go really bad and you do really fucked up shit, go to the gym, okay, and buy a dog and it's it's done. It is done. Bedmeister's it's video full reset. A you, it's a, it's a full reset. It's a full reset. Literally, stream was a whole lot of nothing with him pulling a T Martin and streaming with his new dog in frame the whole time. He since disappeared again in December of 2021 with no update since. See? See? For sins community. You ever wonder where the majority of the Twitch memes and emotes come from? The self-proclaimed Forsen buys are responsible for a great many aspects of Twitch culture, ranging from Twitch music, Forsen CD, Bat Chest, and 30 player stream sniping lobbies, just to name a few. Depending on who you ask, you'll get a slew of different opinions on the community from some people calling them toxic to just people being general fans and viewers. Whatever your opinion is on the community, they do play a huge part in making things, people, and emotes popular in the Twitch space. And we have that community to thank for a lot of what we love about Twitch in its current year. Standing here with Forsen. The Hot Tub Meta. In 2021, streamers Indie Fox and Amaranth began to stream in kiddie pools. They weren't actually hot tubs to my disappointment. Sooner than later, this grabbed the attention of every streamer on the platform and every commentary channel on YouTube and LSF. 
This slingshotted them both into tens of thousands of viewers. Both streamers, Indie Fox and Amaranth, among many other names, were banned a few different times throughout the course of this meta. Ultimately, in the end, Indie Fox was permabanned after six previous bans in six months' time. During all of that, many streamers joined in the hot tub streams, with some even collabing with Amaranth and Indie Fox for some hot tub action themselves. Everyone had an opinion on what? this. What? So you guys, I can't sometimes, man. What the fuck is with you? Streamers, and you'll find plenty of different takes on this, varying from it's the girls fault that this is happening or that it's twitch's fault for having dog shit tos the entire thing was very Dude. controversial but also very entertaining to watch at the same time because there was all of this discourse that came with it dark viper au a more recent incident on the list we have the case of dark viper au who in february of 2022 posted a script for a video about reaction streamers now a lot of the pages on this 14 page document read pretty okay but there's a small section that's a little bit odd which makes a comparison about reactionary content and people who commit sexual assault. This document obviously sparked controversy among many people, but the main parties involved were Moist Critical and Dark Viper AU, who eventually hashed it out playing GeoGuessr. Listen, Doug Summer wrote this. I have no idea if this is actually true or not. Listen, I have no fucking clue. Artesian Bill's CEO. The poor employees uh -oh, of this company had their jobs ruined by one egotistical CEO. On March 1st, 2022, Artesian did an ambassador raffle giving away a Love PC you, to potentially QC, any ambassador that decided to enter this giveaway. Streamer Kaya Pia won the giveaway, but when she Huge. did, the CEO of the company, Noah Katz, began judging her social media pages while live on the official Artesian Builds Company Twitch page. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a no. Uh, less than one follower gained per day. This caused a large majority of people in the Twitch community to instantly turn on the dude. A lot of ambassadors- I wonder if we were to judge the company Twitter after that. How how well was their uh, social growth? ...and partners with the company received the, uh, their deals and with OTK. One of the biggest would, notably yeah. being OTK, one of the biggest organizations on Twitch at this very moment. The damage done by just one person was so bad that the company ultimately ceased all of their operations. And the people that work there are freaked the fuck out that they are permanently tied to Noah's selfish and poor decisions. Daquan's through You know what, Jeff? One of the guys, I'm gonna go above and beyond, okay? And just flat out just yeah, guys, listen, listen, I think it's kind of an important topic, okay? A lot of people know sometimes shit about certain companies or certain certain people and behind the scenes and they wait till and it explodes to pack on and jump on the pile of dog shit. Why is it so hard to call out dog shit when it happens? How hard is it to just to to to, to just to just if you see a whiff of dog shit, just open up about the dog shit. I don't I don't understand. I don't understand. Some of these guys they're not even sponsored either. Some people are not even sponsored either, and they don't say anything. To Noah's selfish and poor decisions. Daquan's Thumhouse. What? One of the biggest just, Fortnite just... content creators, Daquan, dominated Twitch and YouTube, but seemingly disappeared off of social media for years. He made a comeback in 2021, getting- Do they need their job? In this field, there is so many jobs they can take. So many jobs. I'm, I'm not gonna. It's whatever, dude. Signed to NRG I'm and announcing anything. a huge I'm, I'm gambling house whatever. with him and Hamlin's being the biggest ones involved. Their return stream averaged 70,000 viewers and peaked at 90,000. But again, two months went by and there was radio silence until Daquan went live in January of 2022 to explain that everything fell through due to horrible internet issues and the house being more or less scuffed with broken air conditioning and showers. Daquan even explained that he doesn't know if he still has a contract with NRG. His last stream was on February 11th of this year, and I hope that everything is well with him and Hamlin's. Level 3. Among yeah, Us's popularity. I previously stated that Soda Poppin popularized and created the formula in which you have players in a call and they mute Mike after they die, but this was actually wrong. It was Admiral Bulldog who made the formula popular. My apologies. Co yep. Hey, how about- Give me credit, man. I- Hey! Hey! I said- I said but that! this was actually wrong. It was Admiral- B I called that the, the- The day you will start saying- I said this! I said Admiral Bulldog was the first one to do it! I am SHUT UP! I said I said that the day it happened, okay? Because Pluto is my is my uh, a manager of uh, at Twitch, okay? And he told me about the game, okay? About the same time as he told I, 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 I'm pretty sure they had a whiff of it. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I was playing this and I was watching it. Bulldog who made the formula pop. And then after a couple days when Soda asked to play, I was like, yeah, we'll play. 
Because killer. I already knew about it. Kotaku. Okay. Kotaku is on here for them being notoriously awful at covering anything on Twitch. With Whatever, them recently dude. vomiting out an article about the streamer awards. Could it be something that was said there? Maybe a controversial creator was invited. Or maybe something insane happened that required immediate cover. Wait, what happened? I don't get it. Here for them being notoriously awful at covering anything on Twitch. With them recently vomiting. Streamer Awards Trophy leads to Pepe confusion. The goat. How is that a confusion? Vomiting out an article about the Streamer Awards. Could it be something that was said there? Maybe a controversial creator was invited. Or maybe something insane happened that required immediate coverage. They wrote a whole article about the trophy being Pepe the Frog, which is already wrong. That's a goddamn peepo. If you even casually browse Twitch... You know what's crazy though? Kotaku knows better. They know at 100% what Pepe is in the culture, how it's used, and how it's not used, and they still play that card like they don't know how to use it. Oh, guys, is this still the offensive Pepe? <laughs> guys, right? Guys, fuck, fuck, they know better. They, they know. Sure They're just dumb. Year, you'll see plenty. Why do they do that? Hate raids. These specific hate raids began in the summer of 2021, with people setting up thousands and thousands of bot accounts to go into streamers' chats to spam either racist or homophobic messages. This in turn caused streamers to create the day off Twitch movement and decide not to stream on September 1st. This became controversial in itself with people having strong opinions on either going live or not going live. I read the comments in the thread, they're right. Nobody gives a fuck you take a day off. Why is Boo Boo an emote if you, you get are. a 10 minutes time? If every other big it. streamer, if How people got together Boo and they said we're all going to collectively do it, I would do it way. in a heartbeat, right? The aftermath of the event was around a 1 million viewer loss during peak hours and 500,000 views lost during normal hours. On the 30th of September, there was a blog post by Twitch in which they showed off new two-factor authentication features to better protect chat rooms from being raided. As of March 2022, there have been a new form of hate raids by people on a separate website sending their viewers to streamers' chats and spamming homophobic and racist messages. Guys, I'm uh, okay. I'm gonna this. Uh, guys, uh, uh, as somebody, okay, who has a good bot in the chat, we have a good bot here, okay, okay. Um, uh, um, we don't see the raids happen because they get app, they get hard smokes, okay, with you because a bunch of codes and sh it's it's a good bot. It's not a mid bot. It's pretty, but it's pretty good. Man, fuck you, bitch. You man, you a bot, man. You a bot. What can that? Let me talk. Let me talk! I'm talking! Hey, Shakes, you should check this game out called Atomic Heart. It's coming out this fall and it looks way too dank. Let me talk! Okay. Listen. Listen. The problem I have with this is that by by Twitch having measures, they are too, the measures are very bold. Very bold. And by having these measures, they cut down on the healthy and good interactions as the price to cutting out bad interaction, which you would think is, oh, that's a price you have to pay to have a good chat. That's where the bots come in. If you have a good bot in the chat or good bots, you don't have to lose on good interactions by setting up a bunch of, a bunch of stuff up above it to make sure you weed out the negative one, right? So I feel like it's kind of sad. That sometimes they add some stuff that just cuts interaction and, and cut through good usage because of the bad ones. Although this time Twitch was much quicker with identifying the issue and getting rid of the accounts. I'm almost positive this will be a topic I'll have to update as I'm sure this is just the start of these kind of raids. The C word. In December of 2021, two of Hassan's moderators were banned for saying cracker. I'm sorry. I mean the C word. This caused Hassan to go live and by the end of it, he caught a seven day sir, ban. Sir? You dumb cracker bitch. Other streamers Whoa! were banned for actually listening. Oh, to come on, dude. The cracker were Vouch, Frost, Bruce, Drop em Off, and Just the Minx, just to name a few. You had absolutely every streamer under the sun making jokes and poking fun at it. I found some crackers. Let me eat them up all up. Huh? Whoa, what'd you say? Huh? <laughs> Definitely one of the most ridiculous months on Twitch that year. Germa985. Germa as a whole is on this list for just how unique some of his streams are. Whether it be him going out and doing an archaeology stream and driving around an excavator, or his more recent huge stream, The Dollhouse, in which chat controlled whatever he did like a real-life Sims character. Germa is most definitely one of the most interesting and entertaining streamers. Plus, his community is hell-bent on believing that he is a convicted serial killer. Logic finessed Twitch. In 2020, Logic signed a seven-figure deal with Twitch to stream there. And to like, you know, now be a partner with Twitch is insane. He went live for 126 hours the whole entire year. Anybody notice that my, my gun is black and white? So at minimum, with a million dollars, he made around $8,000 an hour. I don't really know. It was more than a... 
Oh, okay, yeah. I don't know how contracts work, mail, but mail. this seems like Logic made out like a bandit in this deal. He last streamed on October 2021 for three hours. Bat Chest, the most talked about emote in 2021. Bat Chest blew up due to Forsen's community, and once it spread to other big streamers, this emote just absolutely exploded in terms of popularity. This also propped up one of the best additions to the Twitch community in a while, Johnny Carwash or Curtis Scott. As the face of the emote, he accepted the memes with open arms, and he was very well recepted within the community as well. Oh, Everyone God. loves Curtis. This is the first time Twitch has had a positive poster boy for their platform ever since Gutex was removed as PogChamp back in 2021. And Twitch has not capitalized on it, which is super unfortunate to see. Has Twitch or anyone from there reached out to like have you involved or use your face? The actual honest answer is, is not a damn thing. Not a, nothing from nobody. I mean, Curtis doesn't even accept donations. All the money he receives gets donated back to various charities, even sub and bit money. I just hope they reach out to him one day, especially since he was a Twitch admin on the platform up until 2016. Level four. Ice what Poseidon's ban. Just a quick update to the Ice Poseidon ban and Ice as a whole. In January hey, of 2022, dude, it was revealed that dude, he was involved in dude, a huge crypto dude. scam and he made out around $500,000. There's an amazing video by CoffeeZilla in which he actually confronts him in a Discord call and Ice Poseidon just openly admits to everything and it really seems like he sees no problem in what he did. The money that's not yours that you took from the project even though you'd failed to deliver. I mean, I'm not really sure what you want me to say, but yeah. But yes, this update is just to let you all know that this dude is never getting unbanned from Twitch. CX Network. Previously, I said the downfall of CX was when they were swatted and Ice Poseidon created a video attempting to distance himself from that group of people, but this was wrong. Those events occurred at the tail end of everything. The real beginning of the end was the string of streams all at a resort in Horseshoe Bay, Texas. The actions displayed by Ice and his crew during these streams was nothing less than dehumanizing. He secretly brought his girlfriend Caroline to the resort and kept her away from the cameras, having her stay in the room the whole day. Yeah, Viewers I, somehow- yeah, I'm not just go full cam, guys. Yes, there's, there's a lot of footage here. Yes, there's a lot of footage here. Found out she was there. There's a lot of footage. Response, I can't do anything. Ice Poseidon attempted to sleep with another girl who was there for the trip. This caused scene after scene out in public near the pool Done. and in the hallways. Done. Is there a fact to go out and slap Kaylee when you're f***ing jealous? She's f***ing been out with you, dude, when we're f***ing <laughs> Yeah, no shit, because I'm f***ing hot. What do you mean? I just tried to help you. Well... Okay, this is a lot, okay? Explain kind of DJ and aware of this. Up. Phantom Lord. Phantom Lord won his lawsuit against Twitch. I, I guess I really can't. I wasn't I'm not aware I, of I this, can't, can't. but this dude wanted $35 million from Twitch. My case is looking towards $35 million plus um, in damages. Well, he got $20,000. He took to Twitter to say this was a huge win for streamers. His reasoning was because now Twitch can't perma you off the platform for no reason or ban you for no reason. I don't think there has been any change to how the way Twitch does their bans since then. So not only are you a scammer, Phantom Lord, you wasted five years for $20,000. Congratulations. Mitch Jones and Trainwreck Saga. When you think of Twitch duos, you instantly think of Tyler1 and Greek or XQC and Moxie. But one of the most entertaining duos on Twitch was Mitch Jones McConnell? and Trainwrecks back in 2017. These two would have some of the most memorable streams, whether it be their IRL streams or just the normal desktop streams. Jesus. Where they would get into absolute screaming matches with each other. This ended up with them having actual beef, I suppose. Maybe? But in 2021, an S fan clip featuring them joking around would put the rumors that they hate each other to rest. Come on, Mitch. What? Come on, bro. Hey. I'm coming, bro. So, like I said, it was three years ago. Hassan. 821. When talking about Hassan, I am not talking about the Twitch staff, but instead, I'm talking about the bean-sized head streamer, who infamously, on August 21st, 2019, had this clip blow up. This is so insane. America deserved 9-11, dude. Fuck it. I'm saying it. Dude! 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 In a video yeah, game. And, and... This would cause him to catch a seven-day ban, and also become one of his community's go-to chat spams with his community members making videos and edits of the incident. Did you mean that? Yeah.
Raj Patel. This one a lot of you may already know, but Mr. Austin Show used to go under the alias Raj Patel, where he ran the game show Raj Royale and other variations like Raj Lorette. Not only did Austin popularize the game show format on Twitch, but when watching these VODs and clips, just the sheer amount of top streamers involved with these streams was insane. Now, I'm not saying these game shows directly blew them up, but having all these faces interacting brought out the best or worst in them, allowing them to be clipped and shipped to LSF and Twitter and wherever. Uh, is it my turn to cause some drama? <laughs> no. Yeah, baby, let's okay, go. Let me let's cause some drama, let's bro. Let's fucking do it, bitch. Go ahead, babe. Austin's impact on Twitch with these game shows is most definitely an achievement. He Je truly was before. Jesus, what? Yo, hey, yo, Austin, if you can watch this clip, man, if you're in chat. Hey, babe. Austin's impact. Dude, dude, how is he so handsome in this clip? What the fuck? Uh, what, the fuck what the fuck happened? He looks like a fucking model. Act on Twitch with these game shows is most definitely an achievement. He truly was before his time with how popular this game show format is now on Twitch. OBS and Streamlabs drama. Near the end of 2021, OBS came out on Twitter calling out Streamlabs for not taking the OBS part of Streamlabs OBS out of their name. They even said before the Streamlabs OBS was released, they came to them and asked about it. To which OBS said no. Take the OBS out your name. They didn't listen. And in the same tweet, OBS said that Streamlabs was attempting to file a trademark for the full name, Streamlabs OBS. All this was already guys, a lot. Guys, 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 at the time I was with Labs, okay? Okay? And I had an, ag an agreement with them because I, I, it was like a, 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 an old agreement. And I wanted to do a media share, okay? And I should set it up with them, right? And I was, I was with them at the time at Streamlabs. And, and then, and then... I'm like, guys, I want to do a, a, a media share where people donate and, you know, we have, like, a videos play or whatever, right? And they were like, after a while, they came back to me and they were like, dude, you know what? Thirty-nine. Our shit is so garbage, we're going to allow you to breach contract this time and uh, use your elements just for the event. And I'm like... <laughs> Okay, dude. So I didn't and then another <laughs> application named Lightstream tweeted out this picture showing that Streamlabs fully copied their whole website layout and they didn't even have the decency to change the user reviews at the bottom of the website. Just a straight one-to-one -one copy paste. It all ended with Streamlabs tweeting out that they are removing OBS from their name. I already know that the Streamlabs booth at TwitchCon this year is going to be extremely awkward. 7TV. Okay, okay, but uh, all jokes aside, all jokes aside though, I... The thing actually has advantage. It's why I think a lot of people still use it. There's some good, good advantages. They have decent tech. Uh, they, the Streamlabs booth they have, that Twitch has advantages. This year is going to be it's extremely just, it's awkward. Seven TV throughout the years on Twitch, Franker Face Z and Better TTV have been the only two extensions for Twitch that have had any sort of popularity behind them. Following the removal of Gutex as PogChamp and Better TTV removing Zulo, the extension Seven TV began development. The extension was extremely niche, really being only used in some big streamers' chat rooms. I caught one of the extension with no prior knowledge other than the fact that it was a new extension with some push behind it and fully vouched for it. Admittedly, that was a mistake as it was brought to my attention that there were major TOS issues with the website and some questionable private emotes. There is still discussion of whether the extension is good or not, and I will say basically a year later, the difference between the extension then and now is night and day. They've recruited moderators from all over the Twitch community and have cleaned up the TOS nonsense. But I do enjoy the extension, but the shaky start is something I think people should at least- Why are they using me face, man? I don't even use it! Nonsense. Why is me face on that? I don't even use it! But I do enjoy the extension, but the shaky start is something I think people should at least be aware of. Level 5, the Angela Shibuya. Previously, I said the Angela Shibuya was the face of Kappa Josh Decino, which is just completely wrong. The Angela Shibuya is an IRL streamer named Rob CD. I believe I got confused when researching because they looked so similar. Hassan, now, now, now. When talking about Hassan, I am not talking about the corn kernel sized head streamer, but instead the Twitch staff. Just an update to him after he was removed as Twitch staff after multiple allegations and he went silent. Well, he hasn't tweeted since 2020, but in this time away from Twitch, he became a crypto bro with his last liked tweet from January 2022 being a Twitch metaverse tournament type thing. CSGO Ambi. On January 27th, 2022, a streamer by the name of CSGO Ambi finished a CSGO game and just began to shave his pubes live on stream. Nobody knows why, but he did it. And he received the permaban. Truly one of the most confusing events I've seen on Twitch. I don't think we will ever get an explanation on why he decided then and there. What? It was time to trim the hedges.
Crow, by far one of the most requested people to be added to the iceberg. Now when reading comments, threads, and Twitter replies about this guy, he was apparently one of the most unhinged CSGO streamers, allegedly snorting coke, buying hookers, and just opening up thousands of dollars worth of CSGO cases on stream. But most importantly, breaking shit. <laughs> I say allegedly, because there's absolutely nothing on this guy. VODs, clips, his Twitter, YouTube, everything is just gone, wiped clean. When clicking any sort of Crow montage video, it's claimed by Crow Reviews, or in some cases, just the name Crow itself. In 2018, a channel named Mr. Reviewer started uploading videos with two public ones and one unlisted video showing off a Lamborghini Aventador. And in the comments, he hearted a comment telling him to come back to streaming. It seems Crow has a very niche cult-like following, with even pros and streamers like Sean Garris and Alinity referencing him in a tweet from March of 2020. This guy truly is something that deserves much more research. I instantly became invested upon finding out everything I had been scrubbed instantly. clean. From the clips I was funny. able to find, it did look like these comments were telling the truth. But my favorite one I stumbled upon was a clip of him just shitting himself then ending stream dude i'll take your witcher 2 sticker stick it in my ass oh. i just shot myself i i really need to go like om high and motar 2k om high is a name you probably haven't heard of in a very very yeah, long time a donate a lot. this dude is the reason why people who donate a ton of money to streamers are called oilers from what we know about him, he comes from a family of royalty from the Middle East, and people refer to them as oil princes. Amhai was really the first person to donate absolutely obscene amounts of money to people like Soda Poppin and Wreckful. The video of Soda receiving $21,000 in one stream from him was one of the first videos I ever watched about Twitch. True. That's not what you're supposed to do with money! Why? Amhai! Why? Why do you do that, this? That is... Amhai would actually inspire another viewer by the name Motar2k to do the exact same thing. Although Motar almost exclusively sent money to CSGO streamers with a whole 33 minute compilation of donations to Don't people like to, uh, Pasha uh, Biceps, Tim. Shroud, Scream, and a ton of other pro CSGO players. This practice has kind of died down a bit. I rarely see huge donations anymore. Instead, nowadays, people just gift a shit ton of subs to people. The Animal Murderer. Back when Austin show was still Raj Patel, he was hosting a game show and asked, what was the worst thing you've ever done? To which streamer, Aquala Gamer, explained she worked as a vet and would kill the pets of people who made her mad. I used to work as a veterinary technician, so I- What? Dog oh, and I, I, glow I, on I, purpose? Yeah, but no one knew, cause you know. Austin tries to save her by saying that of course that it was a joke and asking her if she feels bad. To which she responds with this. Just huh? say it was an accident? That is... <laughs> it, was a, it was an accident. Oh actually. my god, do you regret it? How's that funny? I mean, shitty dog, shitty person. Okay, all right. It's really just unsettling how little emotion she displayed. Huh? She explained that she killed perfectly healthy animals while working as a vet. Clicking to her Twitter shows that she's closed or deleted her account permanently. Emily is pro. This is the story of Emily is pro, the RuneScape streamer who allegedly faked cancer. In a long deleted VOD, Emily explained that she has chronic lymphotic yeah. leukemia, a kind of cancer that doesn't have too many severe Sorry. side effects. Uh, it's... This caused many RuneScape streamers to become skeptical of Emily, saying that she was faking cancer for donations and subs. Ice Poseidon's community would be the main group of people to relentlessly stream snipe and donate, saying that she faked cancer. But we're gonna end it once and for all. Did Emily fake 36 cancer? month sub, let's go. 20 mil. Break it. Duh. Then this clip of RS Glory and Gold saying she faked cancer became extremely popular with all okay, of Twitch. Gee, that was a lot of Emily work. only faked cancer once. Emily only faked cancer once. Yahoo! Yahoo! She ended up having a breaking point on stream one day yeah. and began talking about how she wished she had never talked about the cancer. The shit that I have to go through like every single fucking day, like every day, how much shit? that I put up with, like, every single day. To this day, there is actually still zero definitive proof that she did fake cancer. What do you all think? Dallas Galley. The name Dallas Galley may not ring any bells to viewers, but I confidently yeah, believe Dallas here. is known by more streamers than he is by viewers. Soda, I'm a thousand miles away, but girl, tonight you look so pretty. Referred to as things this like my Twitch's biggest simp, Dallas has piqued the interest of many in the Twitch community with his unusual tweets. Fuck you, five-inch dick. Go down. 
You horny piece of shit. A fantastic mini documentary on the channel uh -huh. Built Different highlights this a lot better than what I can do on what makes Dallas so unique. His channel may be tucked cool. away in the far corners of Twitch, but it is truly a hidden gem when you end up catching him live. Give us a lion roar. My channel is big today, is it? Level 6, Day 9. An extremely light topic to start off level 6, and a more fun fact more than anything. But Day 9 was the day first nine, ever daily streamer number. to receive a sub button. And it stayed like that for a while, as the way Twitch went about giving a sub button was hard coding it into their website. Meaning only a programmer would be the one who can go in there and give or take away sub buttons. Instead of it being someone like an admin just ticking a box or pressing yes and huh? The Bob7 Manifesto, one of the most documented Twitch dramas of all time, including a 39-page Google Doc, multiple 3-hour-plus VODs, and another 17-page Google Doc, but also one of the most confusing Twitch dramas of all time, all involving Bob7, Destiny, Melina, and Big Boss Bose. Bob7 and Melina began talking and becoming close, and this was nothing out of the ordinary as Destiny and Melina were in an open relationship together. With Destiny becoming guys, close, out of all Destiny drama, this is the most boring. With Bose as well. Lengthy, Things just got so confusing from there, garbage. but it can all be explained with. Allegations it wasn't that Bob even good. Seven was abusing his power as an Austin Show recruiter by saying creepy ass things to contestants, and that he was also talking shit behind Destiny's back to Belina. With Bob Seven refuting these claims, saying Destiny spent the last two months trying to ruin his life with these false allegations. This back and forth went on and on, with multiple other streamers getting involved, all with Bob Seven getting fired from working on the Austin Show. His Twitter has since been inactive since December 31st. 2020. My Clips TV. My Clips TV was a website attempting to sell streamer clips as NFTs. Did they have permission to? No. With them even having wreckful clips on the website available for purchase. They're fucking selling wreckful clips. That's not nice. What do you expect, man? Do you expect these companies to be nice? Look at them, they're scum. Ms. Kiff was linked to this website on stream and was able oh, to man, find out the dude who was putting this all together was an ex-Twitch staff. They were able to get him in a call, and the more this dude talked, the deeper he dug his grave. In a system where um, a transaction only goes through if a streamer accepts it, or a streamer lists a clip for sale. Yeah, you ab that, that's, that's absolutely not okay. As what he was what? doing, it was just illegal. This all ended with the dude, of course, closing the website for good. Four player podcast. Four player podcast is on here just for the fact that they are the channel that popularized playing games on stream on Justin TV. Oh. Uh, oh, this guy knows what he's talking know. about. These videos are from 2008. And the way you can see how they created their own format for making live gaming commentary content is chat, quite. Chat, is, wasn't Justin TV ironically kind of started IRL, then went to full game, only game, bad if not game, then a little bit looser IRL, now more out, now it's like IRL well, like dominating. Look at, he's trembling. I just want to hug him. Oh. They would also have a clip of them playing GTA 4 become so popular that a whole section in GTA 5 is a reference to that exact clip. Slow down, Scooter brother! Scooter brother! Scooter brothers! Scooter brother! These guys were the true Damn, pioneers to video game streaming. Roblox Charity Stream. In 2014, the Roblox channel went live for a 24-hour charity stream. At some point in the stream, the screen went black, but the mic was still live and picked up a group of Roblox administrators making valid criticisms towards Roblox as a whole. One admin stated he had to fork out the money for a new work PC because the company would not upgrade it themselves. Shit just wasn't out happening we couldn't get any traction on anything and we needed a computer so i just fucking went and bought the parts and built it or explaining how the company just doesn't care about their department and how expendable they are take you long to realize that roblox doesn't give a fuck yeah. about our department <laughs> yeah they were doing Jesus. Fine before us, so we'll do, you know Ironically enough, almost immediately after the stream, three admins were fired. Jax, Smirking Revenge, Snowblocks, and BitShift. The most awkward part about this was a few days later, Roblox went live again with the CEO of the company and Andrew Hack, who was another person present during the stream. And this whole stream of these two felt very confusing and uncomfortable to watch. Yeah, also, yes, yes, 
Yeah, you don't remember the video we watched about how these scum Oz people with the, how much money they give to people that buy their uh, their Robux uh, related to their games? Like people get uh, like pennies on the dollar. It's insane. Hey, he's they get shafted so hard. To be used as an example for other employees who slip up in the future. The King Vaughn interview. Back in 2020, the Rolling Loud Twitch account had King Vaughn on for an interview segment. And all was well to begin with. They would grab chat messages and questions viewers had and they would ask Vaughn them. Why would anything happen here that's bad? It only got unsettling when a user by the name of Salty Knob 713 asked them to ask Vaughn if he'd ever do a feature with Model, Tyreek, P5, or Malcolm. Instantly, King Vaughn became extremely excited, telling them to say the names over and over again. Nate, you want to do the features again? Uh, he'd have to scroll up. I can't even see hey, that shit. Hey, y'all, listen to the names. He said, I want to do the features. Model, Tyreek, P5, or Malcolm. <laughs> These were all the names of deceased rival gang members and. Allegedly, King Vaughn had something to do with these four deaths, with him even serving time for the Malcolm case, but in the end was acquitted of all charges. Big Mike was sentenced to 16 years in prison for aggravated battery with a firearm and an additional 12 years for backing out of some type of deal with prosecutors. The other suspect was acquitted of all charges and was able to walk out of the courtroom a free man. That other we suspect was King Vaughn. Hmm? Just a creepy moment caught live, especially with Two the off comments the he jungle, made saying, Bagu. I'll do a feature with them, but they probably don't have the money. And I'll do a feature with all them niggas. Tell them just send them money. Yeah, we need that bag. 100 oh, racks. Bag. 100 racks of feet. Oh, do they got it? Level 7, Vampire Craig. If you're ingrained in Mitch Jones's community, the name Vampire Craig is already something you're aware of this guy was and is a horribly obsessive fan of his believing him and mitch will get married one day there's an old vod of him being added to a call with mitch and greek inside it huh? and once he joins he just instantly just repeats that him and mitch are together and that he's his boyfriend it's craig man it's craig really i'm his boyfriend no 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 you're not my boyfriend you're not my boyfriend listen craig I'm a big No, no, no. You're not my boyfriend. You're not. You're not my boyfriend. Why would you speak to your boyfriend like that? No, no. Hey, hey, Brittany. Hush. Okay, be quiet. Mitch, I'm your boyfriend. Would you respect your boyfriend? Now, from what I've said, this doesn't seem like anything too horrible. Just a case of a really weird obsessive fan. Except for the fact that this guy uploaded a video to Hub of him masturbating for Mitch Jones. The only proof of this video ever existing is a screenshot of it inside How. Always Twitch music video titled Lose Your Subs. I've been roasted and stalked by a vampire gay. Poshy Brid. In February 2017, streamer Poshy Brid began a 24 hour charity stream. Everything was going as planned. He was on his main game, World of Tanks, playing like normal. When he hops up and lets everyone know he's going for a cigarette break, one hour went by, then two, then five, and he never returned. Brian Vinalt passed away at the age of 35. He was a father of three and raising money Jesus. for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. The cause of death was of an accidental overdose of fentanyl. I'm sure no one knew what was going on behind the scenes, and his passing was confirmed by a detective who had access to his Discord to inform his community of his passing. Someone with access to his Twitter account simply tweeted out, The end, rest in peace. The Justin TV death. Abraham Biggs was only 19 years old when he decided to take his life live on Justin TV. The idea to stream this Dude, only came 12 hours before he went live. He posted about it on bodybuilding.com, a website he frequently visited as the users on there well, explained that up. they did not believe he was it being is, serious got, as he fast. displayed suicidal tendencies before. Abraham was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, and his cause of death was due to overdose of opiates. There are apparently chat logs of viewers egging him on to do it. Hours went by before any viewers began to try to pinpoint his location and call an ambulance. Abraham's father said that those who watch live share some blame in his son's death. Remove Horror. Horror was a Twitch admin back in the day, around 2013. This drama all started when a streamer named Duke Bilgewater made comments of the global Twitch emote Horror added of his boyfriend's fursona. His account was permabanned and everything went downhill from here. Streamers big and small began adding Remove Horror in their titles in an attempt to get him off the staff team. Account after account getting 7 day bans and the official Twitch support uh -huh. mocking those banned. Another staff member joined in and said Horror is going nowhere, going as far 
far as changing titles with Remove Horror and threatening to close the channel if the streamer were to change the title back. 36 hours later, Twitch posted an apology, removing the emote named Nightlight as it was not even supposed to be there in the first place, unbanning well, those unfairly I mean banned, and... Removing you know, horror as I mean, an admin. Now, don't get me wrong. There was genuine harassment from users to horror. And he night to take it out on them, and then overstepped his authority as a staff member to just shut down anyone who was upset with him. With that, this will conclude the 2022 Twitch iceberg. I hope you all enjoyed it. Good. Maybe learn a thing or two about events or people that you weren't aware of. Again, let me know if there are any errors or topics that need to be added for an updated iceberg. Have a good one and stay safe. This was pretty good. I enjoyed that. It's not bad. Um, does someone want to play uh, We Were Here Together? Or Were We Here Forever? Do you want to play the game or not?